One question I get asked is this, is a Roth IRA really a good retirement plan? Today I'm gonna to share with you why a Roth IRA may or may not be a good retirement plan, but if you're gonna use it, how you can use it as a tool in your plan to help you reach your goals faster. Now, if you're wondering about using Roth IRAs in your retirement plan, you're likely look, looking to start one, obviously. That's why you're researching this. So let me dive into this a little bit deeper. One, what are the pros and cons, right? Why would you use a Roth IRA? The big pro, the big reason that people love Roth IRAs is that you put in with after-tax dollars, meaning you put it in with money after you get paid your paychecks, and then it grows tax-deferred, and then you can pull it out tax-free. The tax-free is the big thing that people want, right? They want that money coming in. They don't have to worry about paying tax in the future. They'd rather just let it grow tax-deferred and come out tax-free. That's probably the biggest pro with a Roth IRA. Now, there are some limitations to that as well. For example, there are some amounts, certain amounts of money you can't put in. If you're just starting a normal Roth IRA, you usually can't put in more than six or $7,000 a year, which is not gonna make you rich by any way, shape or form, and won't create much of a retirement for you anyways. Some people might convert their IRAs into Roth IRAs, or we've seen people even do what's becoming more popular, doing a Roth 401k so they can put in more money, maybe about $20,000 or so a year. That's about the max you can put in put that into a Roth 401k. Now that's different, but again, Roth IRAs, you know, they do have some good things about them because they do, if there ever is a retirement plan that I like, I would say a Roth IRA takes the cake. Here's, I think, one of the biggest reasons not to do Roth IRA. The biggest reason, besides the fact you can't put in a lot of money, is that there are so many rules and those rules can change at any time, any time. Because who actually owns your Roth IRA? Believe it or not, it's actually not you. <laughs> it's actually the United States government. They own the Roth IRA. You are just the benefactor to that. This is why I tell people you never really own a 401k or an IRA because the government is the one that actually owns and controls it and makes up all the rules and they can change the rules at any time. They're like my kids when I try to play a game like Monopoly or Sorry or something like that and they say, rule change, we're gonna do this rule now. Uh, kids, that's not the rule. No, but we can win if we change it to that rule. Well, that's not cool because then I lose. Yep, that's what the government kind of does to you, right? They change the rules just like our kids do on us whenever they feel like. And the question is, do you trust the government? You know, if you do, great. You might, you might be in the best place for you. For me, uh, I know that the government has good intentions, but I also know that they're broke and they need money and they can change the rules. By the way, did you know this? Did you know that even on the table recently as last year, they were talking about taxing Roth IRAs if you had more than a certain amount or you made more than a certain amount of income. Not to mention, if you make too much money, you actually can't qualify to have a Roth IRA set up in the first place. That's another problem, right? Because if you actually make good enough money to finally save something, they're not for you. Roth IRAs were never meant to make people rich. They were meant for the poor and middle class, the really lower middle, lower middle class, to have something to give them hope. Try to take some pressure off of the government to have to bail you out because you wouldn't be able to save enough in those in the first place. Okay, if I can speak candidly, I just did right there. So when is it a good idea? It can be a great idea if one, you're gonna retire after the age of 60. And then two, especially if you're worried about taxes being higher in the future, that could be the path that could be best for you. They could be a great idea there. But the real question is, can you do something better? Can you actually do something better than a Roth IRA right now? Now, I'll teach you one cool trick you can do if you already have this Roth IRA or you're looking to do one and you wanna stick with that plan, but you're wondering, do I really wanna be investing in the same old you know, stock market, mutual fund type of stuff that my financial advisor keeps saying, which financial advisors are not financial experts, they're just financial salespeople, right? What else can I do that's outside of that, that very tight knit system? you could do what's called a self-directed Roth IRA. What does self-directed mean? Just like it sounds. You get to direct where that money goes. You get to decide where it gets invested. And guess what? You don't have to put it in the stock market. I know this is a shocker because many times you've been told Roth IRAs are just that retirement plan. You put in mutual funds just like a 401k and that's exactly what you gotta do just like a robot. No, you don't have to do that. You can actually use this money in it, almost anything. You can invest in almost anything. Now, it may or may not make sense in some of those things, 
but you can go invest it. You can actually do your own stock trading accounts. If you want to do stocks, but you just don't want to do mutual funds, you can invest in the stock market. You can actually go and use it to buy real estate. You can actually go buy rental properties with these, these Roth IRAs. But again, it has to be self-directed. This is something that your financial advisor will not do for you because it's set up differently, separately. You can actually go and buy into apartment buildings, buy into self-storage units. If you're worried about a recession, self-storage units usually thrive during a recession. Doesn't mean they're recession proof, but they can be very recession resistant. Oil and gas, you gotta pay so much money at the gas pumps, why not get a benefit for it anyways? Even lending, you know, I, I can do things like real estate lending, right? Lend people money for a matter of months and be able to have them use my money in real estate deals. I don't have to deal with anything with it. I'm totally passive, I'm hands off, but they might pay me 10, 11, 12, 15% on my money. I love that. And if it's in a Roth IRA, guess what? That 10 to 15% doesn't get taxed. Zero tax on that money. That could be awesome. But again, that's only a good idea if you're thinking of retiring after the age of 60. If you wanna retire sooner, a Roth IRA may not be the thing for you. There is a vehicle though that does work like a Roth IRA, has the same tax rules, but it doesn't have the 59 and a half rule, doesn't have the 72 rule where you have to pull out a certain amount of money or they penalize you 50% tax, none of that. This one has less rules and the government can't change the rules on you, which is even better. Same exact tax deferred, tax, tax never type scenario and that's life insurance. Now. When I say this, I'm gonna put a big disclaimer on this because not all life insurance is created the same. Most of the life insurance policy you buy from a life insurance agent are set up like crap, right? They make you very little money, but they make the agent lots of money. Why? Because you pay a lot in fees for those policies. You know, especially, and I'm not talking about term life insurance, you can't do anything with that. You have to die to get that money, not my recommendation. My recommendation is using something that's more permanent like whole life insurance, where it's guaranteed growth, at least 3% a year guaranteed, even if the world goes to heck in a handbasket, right? Still, it's guaranteed to pay at least 3%. And many of these companies we've had pay for over 100, 150 years above and beyond their minimum. So most of them are paying right now between five and 6%. You can take these where they build up this cash savings account that grows tax-free, comes out tax-free, just like you with the Roth, but get this, you're not limited by how much you can put in per year. There are some plans, I've had people put in anywhere from like $5,000 a year or less, even for their kids, if they're saving for college instead of using their 529 plans, which suck. Or we're doing plans that actually could put in like a half million or a million dollars a year. None of these dumb rules. And you don't have to worry about making too much money where you don't qualify for Roth. Life insurance, you can do it. So there's a lot more flexibility. No 59 and a half rule. You don't have to worry about that. So if you wanna retire early, this is definitely your way to go. And the, again, the cool thing is they can't change the rules on you. Just like they can with the Roth, they can change the rules later on and say, ah, oh, we're gonna tax you after all. They can't do that with an insurance policy because it's a contract. Whatever the contract states at that time, those are your rules from that point forward. Even if they change the laws, you are protected. Oh, speaking of protection, in most states, you're protected from lawsuits and creditors. Where lawsuits and creditors can actually get to your Roth IRA or your savings accounts, they cannot get to this money inside these life insurance plans. You could have millions of dollars in there. They can sue you and win and not be able to tap into that money. It's protected. But regardless, even though you can make a pretty decent return, it's tax-free, here's the magic. You can actually get a line of credit from a bank or from the insurance company. They can give you a line of credit where you can borrow money from them while leaving your money still in here, earning those tax-free compounding interest returns of like 5% plus, and you can go and lend it out or you can borrow from them and then use that to invest in other things. So just like you wanna do with a self-directed Roth, if you wanna go invest in real estate or invest in whatever you want, heck, you can even go invest in a business, guess what? You can do that with your, your actual life insurance plan. You can do that and make money in two places at the same time. You can double dip on your returns because what happens? You're borrowing at a lower rate than what you're earning inside this account because you're borrowing a low interest rate so think of it this way. Say that you're making 10% on this investment, but on the spread between the loan and what you're making on the life insurance, you make another 2% a year. Guess what? Your 10% just became 12% a year. And that can get you to retire much, much faster. Okay? So go check it out. We got other videos on infinite banking, especially the max ROI infinite banking. You can check out our playlist on our YouTube channel. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to it, subscribe today. 
And if you like this video, check out Can I Convert My 401k to a Roth IRA After Retirement? Go look it up, it's awesome.